What's up guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire video. This one we're covering again some more battles from the post game of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Why were these not included in the, 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 the up video, the upload, the video from yesterday which focused on basically rotating teams, a set of five teams, to five trainers that had rotating teams. Why did I not include that here? Because they are slightly different. That was just about the rotating teams, and as we know, that video went on for a while anyway. So this one is about something different, something I'm calling similar battles from possibly another post-game area. And you're, you guys will, you know, you'll get what I mean when I actually get into this. So, I guess we'll just get into this. So the first train we're looking at is Las Suzette. She has a level 55 Maractus and a level 55 Vaporeon. The Maractus has Storm Drain and the Vaporeon has Water Absorb. And we know two, uh, two moves um, from each. We know Maractus knows Needle Arm and Poison Jab, and Vaporeon knows Aurora Beam and Scold. I don't know why the other two moves, each of them, they're all question marks. I don't know if this is meaning they only have those two moves, or whether it means that they haven't found out the other moves or not. But I'm not sure. So anyway, just the those two moves are known. All the IVs for the first section here, have they're all 15 IVs and all the stats. The second person we're looking at is a Roman Lily Time, who has a level 55 Go Goat and level 55 Gudra. Uh, Gogo has Sap Sipper as his ability, and Gudra has Sap Sipper as his ability. Uh, Gogo has Horn Leech and Wild Charge as moves, and Gudra has Aquatel and Dragon Pulse as moves. Then we have Ace Trainer Benedict, who has a level 55 Flareon and level 55 Heat Mod, both with Flash Fire as an ability. Flareon knows Fire Fang and Quick Attack, and Heat Mod knows Flamethrower and Power Up Punch. Then we have Ace Trainer Melba, who has two Shedinja, both level 55, obviously both with one regard as the ability, and both know Shadow Claw and Axe after that we have Rich Boy Filbert, who has a level 55 Lantern and level 55 Jolteon. Lantern has Illuminate as his ability and Jolteon has Volt Absorb as his ability. Lantern knows Thunderbolt and Waterfall and Jolteon knows Thunderbolt and Pin Missile. Finally we have Lady Dulcie, who has a level 55 Carnivine and level 55 Miss Magius. Both have Levitate as their ability. Carnivine knows Power Up and Crunch and Miss Magius knows Power Gem and Shadow Ball. So guys, have you noticed something? You know, do you know why they're called similar battles yet? Because they have the same abilities, or at least the ability to do the same thing. First up, that's Suzette. Her Maractus knows st her has Storm Drain and Vaporeon has Water Absorb. Both moves that render water type moves non, you know, they don't help. They render, render them useless and actually restores health points. A Roman, Roman Lady Time with both her Pokemon know it having Sap Sipper absorbs Grass type moves and has a physical attack, I think. Ace Trainer Benedict, both his Pokemon have Flash Fire, which absorbs Fire type moves and obviously powers up Fire type moves at the same time. Ace Trainer Melba, both her Pokemon have Wonder Guard, which don't absorb anything, but obviously they do mean that you have to have a super effective move against them. Then Rich Boy Filbert, Jolteon has Volt Absorb, which obviously absorbs electric type attacks. But um, Lantern, it says here, has Illuminate as his ability, which actually doesn't do much apart from, I think, raises the accuracy of moves. I th I, off the top of my head, I think that's what it does. Illuminate, actually, yeah, right, okay. It has no effect in battle. Um, but what I'm thinking here is possibly this ability is actually listed wrong or was put in the game wrong. As we know, guys, as always, not mentioned in these videos, this is an early stage or a, a, not, a, not a finished stage of the actual full game. So possibly this is a wrong ability. Because Lantern's other main ability is Volt Absorb, which would be exactly the same as J Jolteon, so possibly that's what I'd assume. And his hidden ability is Water Absorb. I'd, I'd predict the Volt Absorb, but obviously Water Absorb is another possibility as well. Then, Lady Dulcie has two Pokemon with Levitate, which are obviously immune to ground type moves, so that everyone has an immunity of some sort. Uh, Lazy Suzettes are, last Suzettes rather, are immune to Water types. Aromated Times are immune to grass types, H and Benedict immune to fire type, H and Melba immune to everything that's not fire, flying, dark, ghost. I think that's it. I, I, I can't have a list of them all or not, but you guys get the idea there. Uh, Rich Boy Filbert has them immune to electric, possibly, and Lady Dulcie has them immune to ground type moves. So everything has an immunity here. They all have similar abilities, hence the term similar battles. So I don't really know what this is, this is about. I'm guessing they're just trainers from a post-game area, possibly in a little battle sort of thing, similar to what we saw last episode, because of the fact that they're all special teams. If they were different teams, uh, and obviously there are a few more teams that have higher level Pokemon, which are obviously just post-game area teams, I wouldn't take much notice of them. But these all have very similar teams, very, you know, they're very special teams. 
So I wouldn't I wouldn't think they'd be sort of just in the wild somewhere or on a route somewhere. I'd assume they'd be in a, some sort of place where you can battle them daily or something to that effect. They could possibly just be on route when you're, you're just passing along route and they've just done this to make it special or whatever. But this really does make me think possibly something else about that. But I don't know. That's the first section there. Let me know what you guys think now below in the comment section about these these sort of similar teams with abilities and such. And, and just let me know what you think about them, guys. Are they interesting or are they not? Let me know. So then we move on to the second section. And again, there are, there are similar teams, these. But they also have some other stuff to talk about as well. First up, we have Street Thug Alfredo, who has got a level 65 Licky Licky, a level 65 Lilligant, and a level 65 Licky Licky as well, so he's got two of those. Licky Licky, and, or both of Licky Licky, are holding wide lenses, and Lilligant is holding a choice scarf. They all have the ability to own tempo, so again, they're similar abilities. And Licky Licky, the, the Licky Lickies, have rollout as their ability, and uh, as a move rather, and Lilligant has Cheetah Dance as a move. Again, this is the only move listed, so I'm not sure if they have more moves, or whether it's just a single one. All the IVs for all these Pokemon uh, are going to be 20 for this section, so that's why, hence why I said section just now. So that's the that first battle there. Then we have Street Thug Rice, who has three Ditto, all level 65, all holding an Iron Ball, all with Imposter as the ability, and obviously Transform as the move, but Imposter does that instantly. Uh, these guys actually have 30 IVs in all their stats, as opposed to 20. It's the only change there, so I thought I'd just sort of mention that. So. This is interesting. Three dittos, all imposter, 30 IVs as well. Iron Ball, don't know why they've got an Iron Ball, it slows them down, but you know, who knows why. Then we have Street Thug Barley, who has got three level 65 Swoobats, all with bright powder, which obviously lowers your accuracy. Uh, ability is simple here. Moves are double team and steel wing, so obviously there's gonna be uh, double teamers, and obviously bright powder is lowering your your accuracy anyway, and then steel wing for, your, for their main attack. Back to 20 IVs for this one as well. Then we have Street Thug Sawyer, who has a level 65 Altaria, a level 65 Tropius, and a level 65 Aerodactyl, all holding Salak Berries, which I think reduces the power of super effective ice time moves. I can't quite be sure off the top of my head, but I should just quickly check that because I'm pretty sure that's what it does. But it'd be good to check. A Salak Berry, actually, um, if I can find a, a usage for it. Uh, oh no, if held by a Pokemon, it raises its speed stat in a, in a pinch. So obviously, once again, it goes down to lower level, it will boost your speed. So. I guess it's because they're flying types, I don't know. Altaria has Natural Cure as the ability, Tropius has Chlorophyll as the ability, and Aerodactyl has Rockhead as the ability. So there's no real correlation here as such, apart from Salak Berries of similarity. But they all have to move Bulldoze apparently, so that's a, a correlation there. That's the only one that's listed there too, so possibly they're all just going to use Bulldoze over and over again. Who knows? I'll talk more about that in a second. Then we have Street Thug Pitaha who has got three level 65 Whimsicott, all holding wide lenses. Wide lens, I do believe, increases accuracy, so that could be to do with their moves, possibly. Obviously, it'd be good for the Licky Lickies to have in the first place, because they're using rollouts, so that would you know, make sense there. So the wide lenses on the Whimsicott, they have Prankster as the ability, which is going to be quite annoying, because they'll have Stun Spore, and also have all, all have Dazzling Gleam. Stun Spore and Dazzling Gleam has all their moves. Next up, we have Street Thug Base, who has three level 65 Fable, all holding a metronome and all, all knowing the move metronome and also all having magic guard. So I'm not sure if metronome actually works with metronome the, the move, like if you use it, whether it depends, it's like if it if it boosts up every time, even if it's not the same move you get on metronome, if you guys get what I mean there. But I'm, I'm not quite sure in that sense, we'll have to think about that. Then after that we have Street Thug Wellington, who has a level 65 Crocodile, a level 65 Arcanine, and a level 65 Scrafty. They all hold Citrus Berries, and they all have the ability to Intimidate, so hence there's sort of the, the move there, the, the similarity there. And they all have Snarl as their, their move, their singular move. They don't have, actually have any other move than Snarl. So I don't know if there's others, as I said, if there's others that aren't listed, or if they're just going to have those single moves. Who knows? Who knows? Then we have... Uh, Black Belt Banting. Black Belt Banting. I've actually got him as a Street Thug though, because as we know, they've all been Street Thugs so far, so I just thought I'd include the Street Thug, because I'm not sure if the fact that he's a Black Belt is meant or not, because obviously it's, this is the last one, it's breaking away from the actual, what you'd expect, I guess, so I just put the Street Thug there anyway. He's got a level 65 Needle King, a level 65 Agron, and level 65 Rampardos. They're all holding Life Orbs. And Needle King has Rivalry as the ability, Agron has Rockhead as the ability, and Rampalos has Mold Breaker as the ability. And they all have the move Head Smash. <laughs> they all have the move Head Smash. Okay guys, so let's look over this. 
Street Fighter Alfredo, the, the, the similarity here is they all have own tempo as their ability, meaning they, they can't be confused. Street Fighter Grice, all three are dittos, all three are holding iron balls, all three have imposter, etc. Then we have Barley, who has three swoop bats, they're all swoop bats, they're, they're all holding bright powders, they all have the same moveset, they're exactly the same. Street Fighter Sawyer with his three Pokemon, they're all flying types, they all have Salak Berry, and they all know Bulldoze. Street Fighter Pataha, they're all Whimsicott, pretty much. Street Fighter Base, they're all Clefables. Street Fog Wellington, they all have Intimidate and Snarl and a Citrus Berry. And then uh, well, Street Fog or Black Belt Banting, uh, they all know Head Smash and all have a Life Orb. So what could, what you, are you guys thinking of anything yet? Let me, let me tell you. Triple Battles. Triple Battles. These are what these are going to be. These are going to be Triple Battle guys, okay? They're going to be Triple Battles, indeed. Stay with me. Stay with me, I will make it, I will explain it to you. The thing I want to do first is I want to check what Teeter Dance does as the move. Teeter Dance the move. I'm not quite sure what it does, um, but we'll see. Teeter Dance as a move confuses all Pokemon adjacent to the user. And as we see, Lilligant is stood in the middle. And this is this is the list they're giving him. So imagine these three Pokemon being sent out against you in a triple battle. Lick and Licky's on the left and right, and Lilligant in the center. Lilligant uses Teeter Dance, Choice Scarf, it's fast confuses all your team, and then Lick and Licky can go with Rollout with Wide Lens to increase the um, increase the accuracy, and obviously Own Tempo doesn't actually confuse those two as well, think about that. Uh, rollout then, they can, they're free to roll out your team with the Wide Lens, makes it more accurate, and allows you to sweep through their team pretty much. And then once you unconfuse, if Teeter Dance is indeed Lilligant's only move, it Teeter Dances again. Second one, three Dittos, they all come out, they've all got Imposter, they transform into exactly the same team you send out, so you're facing your own team. They have Iron Balls, so they are a bit slower, I think. Um, but they all have 30 IVs as well, which your Pokemon may not have. Then we have a Free Swoobat. Free Swoobat, all with Bright Powder. I'm not sure if Bright Powder actually stacks, like whether you, if you have free Bright Powder on the field against you, it actually sort of stacks it up there. Let's have a look. Bright Powder. Raises the, oh, okay, raises the hold as evasion by 10%. Doesn't actually lower your accuracy, it just makes you less likely, less likely to hit them. So obviously they're already 10% faster, 10% more evasive. Then they use double team, and double team, and double team, and double team sort of thing. And then you still want to actually do some damage to you. Street Fug Sawyer, all flying types, they all know Bulldoze. So all three of them are free to use Bulldoze on all of your team. I'm not sure if, oh, well, Aerodactyl is free to use them. Well, not for Aerodactyl, Tropius is free to use them against your whole team. And then Altera Aerodactyl are free to hit the middle one and the left or right one, respectively. So that's a very good strategy there again. Then we have three Whimsicott. All with wide lens, increasing their accuracy. And Stun Spore, which obviously is going to have Prankster, so they can go stun, 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 you know, paralyze your whole team, and then Dazzling Gleam is going to hit the whole field. So hence, that, that's the thing there. Then the Triple Clefable, obviously, that's not really a strategy there. It's just using Metronome and seeing what you can get, really. So that's just a chance of luck. Then Street Fighter Wellington with his free Pokemon. They all three of them come out. All three of them have Intimidate, so they lower each of your Pokemon's attack by three, I think. Um, so you have minus three attack already, and then Snarl the move. I gotta remember what Snarl does actually. I've never used Snarl as a move. Uh, obviously, it does damage, but I think you can also uh, lower. Okay, and lowers the target special attack. So obviously, they've already reduced your physical attack, but then with Snarl, they can reduce your special attack by even more, or by special attack as well. So you're going to be very, very, I guess, not very effective unless, of course, you switch out. They will have Citrus Berries too, which means once you get them down to low health, they. And by that time they've had enough to time to snarl you all, uh, and obviously your special attack is going to be lower anyway, but even when you heal up. And then finally, Needle King, Agron Rapalus, there's no real strategy behind this one as well, but they're all holding your life orb, they all have Head Smash, that's a very powerful move, that's going to do a lot of damage to your team, and will likely not come out well. So, what could these be? Well, they could be in the same area as the previous battles, because they are again similar. The previous battles as well, guys, can you remember, could be double battles. Uh, I am very confident in the fact they will be double battles, actually. I didn't speak much about it, but it's very likely they will. There's not much sort of to, in to indicate they would be, because they're just two Pokemon, but the fact they're just before these, and obviously they're 10 levels lower, there's only two Pokemon there, so those are most likely double battles there. These are most likely triple battles. They could be rotation battles as well, but I doubt it. Um, these seem to work better as triple, but who knows, they could possibly be. Triple or rotation battles these are. So I'm guessing in the same area, so those are doubles, these are triples, and obviously then maybe you, you fight them in order, like, you know, you fight the first double battle and you do like six double battles in a row sort of thing, and here we have, you know, three, four, six, seven, 
three, six, eight, eight. Okay, eight drill. Maybe you have to do them in a row, or maybe it's just challenge them whenever. I feel like it'd be a much more challenge doing them in a row, especially considering how overpowered some of these teams are, or how sort of annoying some of these teams could be. But who knows? But guys, before we end the episode, or before we end the video, you can let me know what you think about that down below anyway. We have one thing to ask to look at. There is another trainer listed here. Underneath, we have the level 55 double battles, the level 65 triple battles, and we have one battle here with level 75 Pokemon. We have Fair Prince Trencherman. As such, I don't know, I haven't got any trainer shot for him, trainer mug shot as the rest, because I don't know what a, a trench, uh, a Fair Prince looked like, or I couldn't see anything looking like a Fair Prince. And he has a level 75 Lucario, a level 75 Tokus, and another level 75 Lucario, all holding King's Rock. Two Lucarios knowing Extreme Speed, and Togekiss knowing Air Slash. Obviously Togekiss also knows Serene Grace, or also has Serene Grace, whereas Lucarios have Steadfast. They all have 30 IVs as well here, it's worth pointing out. So basically this is a flinching team. It could be a trick battle, it could be a rotation battle, it could be a single battle. We don't know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it could be any of them. I, I think maybe Trip about since obviously they're very similar, or maybe a rotation battle since we haven't had those yet. And this is the only battle of its kind there. And I picked this one out obviously because Fair Prince. Like, who's got who's got the the thing Fair Prince? That makes like no sense. Hello, like who is he? What like, like it just doesn't make any sense, guys. If you guys get what I mean there. Um, so possibly a rotation battle here, but I'm also interested. A Fair Prince Trencherman. I'm thinking this has got some a very like you know. A lot to do with the battle resort. A lot to do with the battle resort. It would make a load of sense to me. It would make a load of sense to me. I mean, it's possible, but they might not. It might just be a sort of you know, a, a single battle you see in the wild, on the, in, on the road sort of thing. But I'm very, very confident these are all related. Doubles, triples, maybe rotation, maybe a single, with the Fair Prince Trenchman being the final battle sort of thing. Maybe to do with the battle resort, maybe to do with another post game area. And as some people pointed out in the video from yesterday, maybe to do with the Marvel City sort of, I guess there's, there's something to do with Marvel City we've been told about, some sort of little battle area, but who knows guys. You can let me know what you think about the, all these battles down below guys. What do you think of the double battles there? What do you think of those very overpowered trip battles? And what do you think of the Fair Prince Trencherman? Who's he going to be? What's he going to do? Let me know down below guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like button, and as I said, drop a comment down below. But for now, that's it for me, so I shall be seeing you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, my friends.